Catherine Delahunty. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Tēnā koe, Mr. Speaker. Tēnā koutou te whare paramata. Uh, this um, interchange that we've just witnessed is a classic because I am old enough to remember the mother of all budgets. And a classic interchange is why we're here, especially one without fossil fuels. What we, what we love is when children are at the heart of policy, and this is not it. And I think we've heard some excellent speeches this afternoon from my colleague Jan Logie, Jacinda Ardern, Derek Ball and others, who have pointed out, that the, and Carmel Cepolonis as well, those contributions that talk about the real content of this bill and the real consequences where we have this complicated, messed up morass of punitive welfare legislation. And so inserting $25 in and not talking about the, the reality of that $25 and what happens in different categories of benefit and work and income treatment, it, not, it doesn't acknowledge the real effects. Let's start with the wonderful, if you've got more than four children, effect of getting less than a dollar a day for, per child. It's a little bit like world vision. We've got to that point now in this country where it's like world vision. The children of this country who are living in poverty are supposed to be grateful for less than 50 cents a day. So we, it, it's, a, it's a little bit like the picture on television that we see of this child suffering from famine, and yet we're reenacting that in our legislation towards children, none of whom deserve it in any country in the world, and certainly in a country that can afford to do a whole lot better. Less than a dollar a day. Absolutely unbelievable. So instead of dealing with that, we're now going to have charities all over the country, as the Oliver Twist metaphor that my colleague referred to, who will be providing the gruel, who will be doing the breakfast in schools, who will be doing all the charities. There will be people sponsoring, I used to joke about it, sponsor a goat in South Auckland. It's not a joke. The reality is that people are happy to accept in the government that we should use the benefit system to keep people in poverty and punish people who who don't believe that they should who don't believe they should bow down or or and actually accept that people are sanctioned every day in work and income for daring to challenge the way in which they're being treated and then they're trespassed and out the door and they're falling through the cracks and they're not even caught, they're not acknowledged in the statistics. And this bill is not going to help. Of course we believe that any dollar is better than no dollar for families on benefits. So we'll be supporting that part of the bill, but we won't be supporting the tax provisions. And the reason not is, is that because as Child Poverty Action has made it clear, by increasing the working for families abatement rate and lowering the threshold of Child Poverty Action Group says this policy fails to protect the working poor. In fact, by their calculations, a family earning the minimum wage, working 60 hours on 46,000, are about $2,225 um, um, worse off a year in real terms by this bill. So that's how they've kept the cost down in the government. But it's not right and it's not fair. Then let's get on to uh, the 20 hours a week, um, sanction, the work testing. The word appropriate was bandied about a number of times, and it's in the bill, about appropriate, affordable, and no, don't talk about affordable because no one's got a right to talk about affordable unless they're rich now, but appropriate and accessible. Sorry, but bollocks. This isn't how it works in the benefit system at all. People are being sanctioned daily. They're constantly being sanctioned because yeah, they didn't um, fulfil or, or, the quiet order, work requirements. I, I, oh, do I have to sit down? Yes, you do, when I stand oh. up. Yep, that's right. Um, shame. We, we are trying to do a little bit of tidying up of some of the language, and I think the word that the member just used is something which uh, we, don't, we, we don't normally hear and hear, uh, and I, I think I'd prefer uh, for it to be kept outside. So. We're, we're not going to repeat it or withdraw it, thank you. Certainly won't, Mr Speaker. Um, many words are used in this House in very interesting ways. Some a lot worse than what I said in worse ways. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and the member will sit down again. I'm, I'm in, not challenging. Uh, members don't comment when I make a ruling. I, I know that's not been our experience together uh, over many years, Ms Stella Hunty, <laughs> but in this particular occasion, uh, you're not going to answer back. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Um, uh, uh, rules are important, so are traditions. Um, I'd like to talk about the. Um, <laughs> I give up. 
Apologies, as Mr. I have Speaker. For, as Apologies, I have for 50 Mr. Years, Speaker. Yes. Back to the bill. Back to the bill. Uh, as someone working in early childhood, I'm very concerned about the quality of early childhood and what is actually on offer for people who are being told they must work 20 hours a week from the age their child reaches the age of three. We have a crisis in quality. We have the Ministry of Education saying there's a crisis in quality. We have home care, which has not been reviewed because the review was frozen. We have people deeply concerned about the situation for many early childhood centres that have been set up for commercial gain and there is no real evidence that there's any benefit. We have those reports. Those reports come from the government's own people, that early childhood centres are not necessarily, in some cases, safe and helpful places for children's learning. And yet, on the, on the other hand, we have the government saying everybody must put their child... If they're on a benefit, they must go to 20 hours a week work and they must put their children in early childhood. This is actually draconian and inappropriate. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Thank you. Sue Moroni. Oh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Pleasure to rise in support of the Support for Children in Hardship Bill um, and its various components. But look, I do want to say at the outset that this 